Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Wade Silver Show Halloween Special. You may ask yourself, what makes it so special? It's late. Ooh! Okay, look, I did not get my fill of Halloween spirit this year, and I know the time has kinda passed, but I'm just gonna play some Luigi's Mansion, I'm gonna talk about it, and you're gonna like it! Hopefully. I really hope you do. Released in 2013 for the 3DS, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is easily the black sheep of the franchise. It doesn't have the genuine haunts or charm of the original, nor the polished gameplay and beautiful visuals of the third. I am also making all of that up, because I have never once played any of these games, and everything I know about them comes purely from their trailers and general cultural osmosis. That may well surprise you given how much of a GameCube slut I am, and how desperate I am to find the wheat in the Switch's, we'll say generous pile of chaff? But what can I say? As a child, I had one too many traumatic Halloweens to enjoy even the slightest spookiness, and I didn't feel like starting the series with three because it would prevent me from doing one of my favorite things, letting my first look be at the disliked one to see if it's really all that bad from a fully unbiased perspective. That lack of bias, of course, ignoring the fact that I am a slut for the GameCube. We open on a mansion. I'm starting to see why people don't like this game. It really feels like it's missing something. Oh! Inside the mansion, we find... Eee, God! What are these designs? Oh, and Professor E. Gad is here too. Look, I've only been called a ghost stickler seven or eight times in my life, but if I may indulge myself, why the hell do they have pupils? I feel like that's a pretty good design choice for giving a character the feeling of life, but that is precisely what they do not have. It seems like a decision solely rooted in the fact that when King Boo destroys the Dark Moon, them going crazy and turning evil can then be signified by those pupils disappearing. My problem with that is that I have seen a couple of ghosts from the original game, and they look great. I especially prefer the yellow eyes eyes to the white, and that would have been a perfect way to accomplish the same effect. Dark Moon keeping them friendly? These inviting colors. Dark Moon gone? Old spooky colors. I know it might seem silly and harsh to harp on the look of the friendly ghosts at the start of this game from the Mario universe, but I think it's important to do so, not only because it was my first impression of the world, but also because if there is one single thing I absolutely have to praise this game on, it's the atmosphere. I know this is obvious, but there really is no better series to play a game from for Halloween, especially if you're a traumatized child like I was. It's spooky enough to fit the season, but never genuinely scary. You're never gonna see someone going, <gasps> Nobody told me there'd be an Italian. But that really epitomizes my problem with these ghosts. It does such a good job setting up this spooky Halloween atmosphere, and then drops in the despicable me minions. It's far from a deal breaker, I just don't think it fully works for me. All right, tangent over, we've pretty much seen all the setup we're gonna get for this game. King Boo destroyed the Dark Moon, which has some sort of magic power to keep ghosts in check, and the professor forces Luigi against his will to track all the pieces down and put the thing back together. End of plot. I've always loved Egad from a design and concept perspective, and I've always wished that they'd use him more, at least in small ways like Mario Sunshine did. But now that I get a taste of his actual personality, I think I love him at least 13 times more. Everything from his weird little Animal Crossing language to the fact that he uses all these old-timey slang words makes him stand out in a phenomenal way. I could almost describe him as mean-spirited considering certain aspects of this game, but there's a genuine kindness and friendship with Luigi that never gets completely overwhelmed by it all. Some of his lines really give you the impression that he actually admires the guy, which isn't exactly a common sentiment. Plus, even with this weird kind of one-sided relationship, it just feels good to see Luigi with an honest-to-goodness friend, separate from the usual Mushroom Kingdom cast. Besides, despite his fears, I'm sure in his heart of hearts Luigi really does want to save the day, and it wouldn't really be possible for him without this guy and his wacky inventions, namely the Poltergust. This crazy little number is what makes the series go around, and from what I understand, the 5000 model we use in this game is quite the upgrade from the original. Side note, I absolutely love that between games we go from 3 to 5 because the 4000 was canonically turned into a f***ing go-kart for Mario Kart DS? They really need to just put Egad in that damn series already. Is it too much to ask to see this beautiful little old man burning rubber alongside dolphins with the sexiest saxophone solo of all time in the background? Is it? Fine, let's just pretend you've never heard that question before. But not only will the 5000 be sucking up ghosts, you've also got the strobe bulb, letting loose a flash of light to stun ghosts in their tracks, the dark light device, helping to locate hidden secrets, and most importantly, the power surge, allowing you to really let a ghost have it once you've reached a certain point in catching them. And as far as gameplay goes, that's pretty much it. Pick a mission, suck up ghosts. Usually I like to find some kind of word like platformer that gets everything you need to know across, but honestly, I don't even know what genre I'd assign to Luigi mansion. 
action adventure? Maybe just adventure? Or something more abstract, like atmospheric? I mean, I guess you could call it survival horror if you're willing to let everyone believe you have lice. But I hesitate to use some words, like action, because the game is really slow and methodical. Luigi has never felt so immobile, and he can't even jump. That's practically what he's known for outside the series, but I guess it's because... It's because he's carrying the poltergust. You explore small areas, solve little puzzles, and he can't jump because of the heavy thing on his back. This is just... atmospheric Captain Toad! Okay, I have to know, has anyone ever made this comparison before? Or is my third eye truly open? Because once I realized this, it was all I could think about. Sure, a lot of what helps that comparison for this one in particular are its more varied locations and its mission structure, but there are some hefty shared components regardless, and it kind of helped me reframe the game in my mind a bit. Keeping on the topic of these locations, though, I really am surprised to hear it's something not a lot of people are in love with. For anyone unaware, the first game entirely takes place in, well, Luigi's mansion, and the third takes place in a hotel with a bunch of different floors. Dark Moon, on the other hand, takes place in Evershade Valley, home to five different locations that Luigi has to infiltrate in order to find the Dark Moon pieces. A tall, overgrown mansion with a massive tree growing through the middle, an old clock tower, a snowy mine, and two classic spooky mansions like the one from the first game. And in case anyone's curious, five, four, three, two, one. I get that some people can be kind of particular about their holiday scenery and holiday moods, and considering how important atmosphere is to the series, it's kind kinda hard for me to argue with that, but in my opinion, I think I really needed this variety. I really hope I'm in a safe space to admit some things, because I was kinda of feeling bored by the time I was done with the first mansion. If I hadn't gotten the quick shakeups with Plantland and Scissorman's Palace, I wouldn't have been in a great spot. And that transitions pretty nicely into the most horrifying part of our show tonight. ACTUAL CRITICISM! <laughs> I've praised quite a bit about this game, namely the atmosphere it sets up, but what I've realized from actually playing it is that I don't think atmosphere is enough to make me have fun. I'm sorry, but I found the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay little more than purely monotonous, and for some reason, the same goes for the way the journey plays out. Mansion number one. Uh-oh. Ghost stole the gears. Go track them down and get them back. Mansion number two. Uh-oh. Ghost stole the pinwheel veins. Go track them down and get them back. Mansion number three. Uh-oh, you have begun swearing at your Nintendo 3DS. Wasn't this supposed to be the fun, creative side series that put the boring, repetitive main series Mario games to shame? Like, some of the bosses were pretty neat, I guess, but every other encounter is identical. You see a ghost, you flash the stroll bulb, and you suck it up, pulling away from wherever it's moving and occasionally pressing A. If they have something that prevents them from being stunned, you either wait for them to leave themselves open or you vacuum it right off their face. That is all. I just don't even know what I'm supposed to be getting out of this, not to mention how hard it sucks to fight more than one at a time, or fight in a cramped space in general. You would think that should make it more difficult and fun, but it's more like I feel unable to play the game. And when getting to those boring encounters isn't usually interesting either, what do you want me to say? Yeah, the gameplay isn't great, and the story isn't great, and the creativity is low, but I just love Luigi's pants. And what if I told you that those aren't even my least favorite parts of the game. <laughs> it's a little depressing, actually. I really, 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 I'm not done, really, 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 and I can't stress this enough, really never like games that have puzzles with one singular, overly specific solution. This game's not quite pre-Breath of the Wild Zelda bad with it. I mean, most of these solutions are things that a real human being might consider doing, but I'm not gonna lie to you and say that I didn't have to look some of these up. The first one that got me was the dumbwaiter shortcut, because I straight up just did not notice the little pulley thing, but I figured, okay, now I know I need to really pay attention to what's in every room, because the solution could be something super minor like this. I would classify that one as a learning experience, and not too bad all things considered. But on the other hand, how about the worst possible thing a game like this can have? So basically, I've cleared out this entire area, and I'm pretty sure I need to bring this toad over here to help me weigh this down. But he won't go into the water. Perfectly reasonable question, why the f*** won't he go into the water? Immediately, we have a blatant logic issue. But you know what? Sure. Everyone knows 90% of toad deaths per year are caused by ankle-deep water. So do I maybe have to find a way to lift him over it? Throughout this mansion, there have been multiple times 
sequence in which I had to suck something up and carry it to where it's useful, so maybe I can do that? Hmm, no, not that either. I guess it's time to run around and wildly try all of my abilities on every square inch of the area, but even after all of that, still nothing. The f*** is this, Metroid? Okay, screw it, I'm looking it up. Oh! You just have to suck him up and carry him across! If only there were footage on screen of me trying that. I would now like for Egad to invent the polter gun, please. If I feel it necessary to put your game aside in order to look up on the internet how to progress, in my opinion you have failed, and I no longer like your game as much as I did previously. If I put your game aside and look up how to progress, and the solution is something I've already tried and wished witnessed not work? I would like nothing more than to stop playing your game forever. I know that's harsh, and obviously I don't genuinely quit a game every time this happens, but how can you justify this sh in a game about these types of puzzles, let alone when the puzzle has such a stupid nonsensical reason for existing in the first place? And that's why, in the end, I'm a bit mixed on this game. Much more than I expected to be. I kind of thought this would be an easy favorite, honestly. It's got fantastic theming, it's perfect for Halloween time, it's got charm coming out its ears, and it's probably the best looking game on the 3DS, especially with the 3D on. It just runs out of fun too fast. If I do ever come back to play this around Halloween, I'll probably just pick a couple of my favorite missions and stick to them. Or I'll pick the one mansion I like the most. Everybody clap your hands! It's the traditional Wade doesn't know how to properly fit music into his his game discussion so he just drops it at the end segment, preceded immediately by the Wade does a bad game review thing but thinks it's okay because he made a self-aware joke about it segment. What a f***ing hack. Pretty much every substantial piece of music in this entire game was just a reinterpretation of the same melodies. What the hell was that about? It makes perfect sense for different parts of the same mansion to be that way, but why in the world would you do that for multiple different ones with entirely different themes? That melody got old to a degree. I struggle to articulate. I honestly kind of considered turning the sound off at a certain point, but I digress. That's it, right? Dark Moon really is the bad one? Well, here's the thing. I don't think there are that many Luigi's Mansion fans that really hate this one. It's just the one that tried new stuff and didn't fully succeed. I think most would probably consider it the worst in the series, but that doesn't equate to it being bad and kind of puts me in an awkward situation. Since Dark Moon is currently the only one I've played, it's like a reverse Schrodinger's cat. Regnadork's Luigi's Mansion. As far as my brain knows, it's both the best and worst in the series until I play the other two. Fortunately for me, I know I know the first game is well known for being short, meaning it definitely isn't going to overstay its welcome, and the third game having all its different floors sounds like constant variety, so I'm hopeful that they'll still be able to rock my socks off when I get to them. All I can say for sure is that while it didn't live up to my hype, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is a fine game. Maybe even good depending on what you're looking for. It has a lot going for it, and if it seems like the kind of thing you'd enjoy, you probably will. So give it a shot. I do not recommend it. And like a shadow in the dark, our Halloween special is no more. Unfortunately, I'm just now realizing that nothing scary happened. But that's okay, right? I mean, we were playing Luigi's Mansion. It's not like a ghost has to show up to make it a Halloween episode. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>